Who's building it? Okay, this canal, mm -hmm. right, the Kennet and Avon Canal, uh, was completed in the year 1810. So mm -hmm. next year it will be 200 years mm -hmm. ago. Um, it was um, under the direction of an engineer called John Rennie. Mm -hmm. And the canal was built to provide a link between Bristol and Bath yeah. and London. This canal goes um, from Bath, from well, from Bristol to Bath, there's the River Avon. Yeah, yeah. And then you can come off the river in Bath, come onto the canal, and the canal takes you up through Devizes, Newbury, to Reading. And at Reading, you can join the River Thames and then go into central London. Um, so that was the, the idea of, the, of building the canals. That was before the railways were invented. Um, and the canals um, from about the mid 1700s onwards were the main method of transport um, for heavy goods, freight, uh, things like that. Because there were no railways. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there was no internal combustion engine, so there was no, there were no, um, no trucks or sure, things like yeah, that. Yeah. So most of the goods were transported by river or canal, by barges drawn by horses. Walking, horses walking along the towpath, pulling the barge. Um, then, when the railways were invented in the 1830s and the 1840s, um, after some years, the, the transport of, of heavy goods moved over to the railways because it was faster yeah. and less expensive. Yeah. And the canal system then began to fall into disrepair. And um, for many years, for most of the 20th century, this canal was not usable. It was not navigable. Mm -hmm. um, the locks were broken, sections of the canal, all the water had leaked out. And this canal was, was only finally repaired and made fully navigable again um, in the 1980s. And it was opened, uh, there was a grand opening by the Queen and Prince mm -hmm. Philip. Mm -hmm. um, and they came to Bath and they officially reopened the canal uh, in July of 1991. So it's it's less than 20 years yeah. since the canal was made fully usable, navigable again. Mm -hmm. Bath is quite an expensive place to get a house, uh -huh. so it's, it's cheaper. Uh -huh. uh, I have young children and they enjoy moving around and playing on the bank and uh, the, there are lots of young families in boats so they mm -hmm. can meet other children and play with them. Huh? It's very expensive as you probably yeah. are aware. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you buy a house or rent an apartment, it's very expensive. And so when you, you take into account the cost of buying the boat in the first place, um, and then this boat is sort of equivalent to a sort of one bedroom a one bedroom apartment in Bath will cost you anything up to £200,000. Um, it's also, I don't know, it's, it's partly the way of life I think, as well yeah. because it's, you, have a, you have more freedom mm. and it is more sociable. I mean, you do, mm. you, you do end up knowing a lot of people because you you're cycling past them every day. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's one way to also get your own home. I mean, Another reason I moved on the boat was because I couldn't afford to rent a flat on my own mm. in Bath, and I, I've always shared houses mm, with yes, friends yeah. all, mm, yeah. all my life, you know. And so I've never actually had my own place, mm -hmm. and this is the first time I've had my own mm. home, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. So it's the only way you can afford to do that. Really. And there's some people, oh, some people are amazing, and there's some people who, they live on boats and they have children and at the same time they're building the boat around themselves oh, at okay. the same time. So they're an empty shell, shell. Mm -hmm. and they're just, they're putting all the stuff in the boat and building it all, building the furniture while they've got children on. Oh, actually, because I, I would like to go to um, Bath Eastern or Bathampton School, because um, that's really near the canal, mm -hmm. um, where they both are. And, um, so they, because basically the way the reason this is a popular canal partly is because 
there's the look at Bradford that you mm -hmm. saw, mm -hmm. and then the yeah. next look is not until down by oh. the river in Bath. Mm -hmm. So you can go all the way between Bradford and Bath without uh, having to go through a uh, lock. Okay. And um, it's um, so basically it's a lot easier to live. So right. for example, mm -hmm. not me. I work in Bath, mm -hmm. obviously. So I have to to commute or to, to get to work. Mm -hmm. And it's perfect for here. You've got the, the universities on the hill, and the canal goes around mm, the bottom yeah. of the hill. So I can move all the way around oh, here, mm -hmm. and it's still then. a similar distance to work oh, and yeah. stuff. So I think a lot of people work in this area, so they just kind of stay between those two points. Summer holidays, mm -hmm. they all move off. Like a lot of the people with families went down the other side of Bradford Lock and further down there. Yeah. And then on, at the end of the, the school holidays, they come back and then they stay around here. Today, I'm taking the boat down onto the river. Oh. And then I'm going to moor in the centre of Bath, um, just below the Weir and Pompey yeah. Bridge. Yeah. I'm going to moor there until next week. Oh. And then about three weeks. So I'll take the boat down to Bristol. Um, and I'll be working there for a few weeks, but living on the boat mm. in Bristol. Then I'll bring it back up here just before Christmas um, and then from January onwards I'll be working in Bath and so I'll just stay in the Bath area mm. but not always at the yeah. same place okay, yeah. I'll move around a little bit and um, I just know. go to a few different places yeah. I've got a living room in here, uh, which is the, the biggest room. Um, and then I've got a little kitchen in there, kitchen. a small kitchen. Uh, one bedroom for two children, another bedroom for the other child, bathroom, and then my bedroom. So there are three bedrooms uh, in this boat. Three bedrooms, one living room, one kitchen, one bathroom. Oh. Kitchen area here, um, gas cooker. Oven, grill, a little fridge here, I have a little television, radio, Beautiful. all the electrics, the lights, the TV, the fridge are powered by the batteries. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. why you need to run your engine for a mm -hmm. couple of hours every day to make sure you have enough electricity. Mm -hmm. um, so as you can see, it's um, there's not a great deal of, of space in here. Yeah. But I'm single, um, it's just me. So when you pay for your river license, yeah. Yeah. the British Waterways Board give you one of these special keys. Yeah. Yeah. And that, it's, it's not locked at the moment, but it should be locked. Yeah. Um, but any boat people who have a license yeah. will have one of these special keys which will unlock yeah. all of the water points and they'll allow you to attach your hose and fill your water tank. Um, the water tank itself is under the deck here. Oh. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to fill my water tank in a moment, I think. So in here, I have a hose, and the hose fits on there, mm -hmm. and the water inlet is just exactly. down there. Oh, yeah. So I just put the other end of the hose in there, yeah. mm -hmm. attach that to the tank, turn it on, and then when it overflows, it's full. Okay. Can you use gas to... to uh, gas, yeah. yeah. I have... Um, I, have I have space for two gas bottles down there. This one you, is in use. Okay. And this okay. is a spare. Yeah. So when this one runs out, I just connect that one up. And then I can get a replacement for that. And a gas bottle lasts me about um, one month. Yeah. What about the sewage? Um, you have, um, underneath the toilet, there is a sewage tank mm -hmm. which holds um, about 200 litres mm -hmm. and um, when the tank is nearing full. getting full, full, you take the boat to a marina, um, there's one just the other side of the bridge, Bath Narrowboats, mm -hmm. and they have a facility to pump the sewage out into their main sewer. Mm -hmm. um, and you bring the hose over put the end of the hose in there, switch the machine on and it creates a very powerful suction and it sucks all the sewage out and puts it into their main sewage tank. There is a charge for this, it's um, £10. £10 yeah. 
and um, the trick is when you live on board a boat don't use your own toilet unless you absolutely have to use onshore facilities as we call public, them. Yeah, yeah. public toilets yeah. pubs cafes restaurants because yeah. that doesn't cost you any money yeah. whereas it costs you money to pump <laughs> yeah. that up but yeah Yeah. 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 Every day is bright to you, and because you can see the beautiful, different landscape in around the river, so I like this one, nice style. Um, let me think about the people uh, who has built this uh, huge project, project the canal system. If we imagine how how did the people do that it was amazing in 18th century to build like this project it was really hard work and another thing actually how is that look <laughs> and, uh, and another thing actually i have a, a great experience about the canal boat thank you i think this in boat is interesting it's amazing but uh, difficult. It's not easy. Small uh, live in a small room in a small facility. If someone uh, gives me an opportunity to live in boat, I think I will think a lot to live in, in boat. Okay. Yeah. We researched about narrow boats and canals, and I found living on the narrow boat is quite wild life. Um, yeah, well, I'm quite interested in living on the narrow boat, but I will be very skinny if, if I live on the narrow boat. Good for me though. <laughs>